What's up now friends, it's Sarah here. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a full redesign. So this set I actually filmed last year in November and I just didn't post it. So I thought it was a perfect kind of design to share with you guys now for fall. So what I did here was file down her past set. I'm using a carbide bit. This one is from Get Buff Pro and I'm just filing the nail down thin, just filing off most of that color and then I'm also shortened the nail with this file. I'm also going to hand file these and prep the nails as well. So at first I need to file down her past set. You're gonna wanna be really careful when you do this so you don't burn your client. Make sure that you ask her often if it's hot or warm so that you can pull your e-file off if it does get warm so you don't burn her. So now I'm just using a glitter belt hand file to taper the sidewalls in a little bit and file the tip nice and straight. When your client has their nails on for a few weeks, they tend to kind of like not be as tapered anymore. So that's why you want to fix your taper if you like that tapered look. So after I filed down all the nails, I'm just going in with a cuticle tool. I sell these on my site, Nail Throne, and I'm just pushing the skin back at the cuticle area right now. You're gonna wanna be very gentle. Don't put a lot of pressure, just a light push, and that'll help expose all that skin under there that needs to come up. Then I flip my tool around, and you can use the scrapey part on the back to gently scrape up some of that cuticle so you can really see what you need to get up. You wanna make sure to get all the cuticle skin off the nail plate before you apply or else you'll definitely cause lifting. You need to get rid of all of it before you apply more product. So after that, I'm switching here to a different tool. I am using this tool. This one's from Get Buff Pro as well. I really like this one. I'm starting in the center of the nail and I'm going down the left side first. Then I'm going to actually reverse my e-file and go down the right side as well. You're gonna wanna be very gentle. You don't really need to put a lot of pressure down. I'm just using this bit to get that cuticle skin up and off. So now I've reversed my file and I'm going down the other side, nice and gentle and careful. This should actually feel nice for your client. It shouldn't hurt or be hot. So here's how they look so far. So I'm using this teeny tiny bit here. I've talked about it in my prep videos. I really like this bit. It's from Get Buff Pro again. It's more of a safer bit than a flame bit. So it doesn't have that pointy bit, but it does the same thing. So I really like these bits for that. So after I have done all my prep, I'm just skipping ahead a little bit here and I'm applying my Glitter Balls Dehydrator to the nail. And I've cleansed off all the dust to make sure there's no dust on the nail before you apply your product. So now I'm going in with my acid-free primer as well, just applying that on the natural nail. You can see she has a lot of leftover color. So normally I would do a new set soon, probably her next set. So I'm gonna go in with plush cover. I love this cover pink, it's so pretty. So I'm using this more as my clear base because I actually am using, um, I'm actually doing like a glitter fade. And so I needed it kind of like that nude color underneath instead of clear. So I'm applying it near the cuticle area and then I'm just kind of feathering it down. So near the cuticle area, push it into it, spread the product get close to the cuticle area and then just spread this down the nail. This is my, basically my clear base, but instead I just went in with the nude, like I said. You, you could also go in with a clear base instead. I'm just using the nude because it just made sense for this design, but I always like to apply a base down before my color to make it easier when the client comes back for a fill. Okay, so the first color I'm gonna go in with is one of my favorites from Glitter Bells. This one's called Blue Velvet. It's a beautiful shimmery navy blue. I'm just applying this on the very tip first and I'm spreading it down. Because it's shimmery, it's really high pigment, so you don't need a lot. And then I'm just gonna flip my brush and fade that up the nail a little bit. This doesn't really have to look like anything yet. It's gonna be covered with some glitter at the fade line. 
I'm just applying a little bit more at the tip where I pulled off some of that color, just to give it full coverage. I'm doing this on both the pinky, the middle finger, and the thumb. And then the other two nails are gonna be a marble design. So I broke her thumbnail while I was filing, so I replaced it with a new clear tip here. And then I'm just applying on top of that. Fading up the nail, patting down, trying to get even coverage. Okay, so now I'm gonna be going in and using Gray Star. I'm applying this at the cuticle area to start, pushing it in, fading that down. This doesn't have to look like anything. This is just for my cuticle area to get that nice and even before applying marble. So I could, you could do that with any color if you were doing marble. Just place one of the colors down first, get your cuticle bead, and then do your marble. It just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm also gonna be using white satin with the blue velvet in this design for the marble. I love the white satin. It's a white with some shimmer in it, makes it so easy to marble. So then I'm just also taking in that blue velvet and the gray star and I'm mixing all these colors to create a marble. Just placing them down first and then using my brush to pull the colors together to make the marble. It's super easy. I always like to do the marble from the right corner down. I don't know why, it's just kind of the way I like to do it. You can really do marble any way you want. Just don't play with it too much or your colors will bleed together and it just won't look like a marble anymore. So just play a little bit with it, not too much. So I added a bigger bead there. Now I'm going in with the white and pulling it through. Going in with gray star and pulling it through. So that's how it looks so far. So I'm gonna also do that on the pointer finger, like I said. So going in with the white first, the blue, and then using the gray to pull the colors together and marble them. Don't play with it too much or it'll get muddy. We are going to encapsulate and file, so don't worry if you leave it lumpy or bumpy or anything, because like I said, you're gonna encapsulate, you're gonna file, so just have fun with your marbling. I just thought this like gray and blue design would be just a perfect autumn design, something a little different than the than the greens and the browns. This is definitely still a autumn look, even though it's just a little different. And sorry, I have been a little MIA. I'm back now, ready to film. I've got a lot of fun stuff planned for the month. I'm super excited to get some more videos out for you guys. So I'm gonna let that marble dry a little bit and then I'm gonna go in with this beautiful color called Cosmic Crush. This is from Glitter Bells and it is so beautiful. I love this one so much. So I'm placing that along the line of the blue velvet and then I'm just fading that down over top of blue velvet. And because the color is so dark underneath, it just looks really pretty. So you could put this over top of a different color and it would kind of look a little different. It just depends. It's gonna shine based on what's underneath. And I thought this looked really nice together. And that's why I did the blue velvet super, super thin because I knew I was applying glitter over top. And if you do your color too thick, then you'll file off your glitter and it just won't look as good. So make sure your base is super, super thin.
sometimes it's hard to add glitter into marbles. So I like to add it over top of the dark blue. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adding it over the dark blue and it just looks really pretty. So <laughs> that's how you can add some glitter in or you can add the glitter in while you're marbling. But I decided to add it after over top of the blue when it was already dry. I'm also gonna go in with another glitter in a minute as well. Okay, the second glitter I'm adding is called Pluto from the Iridescent series. It is so pretty. It's one of my favorite glitters. It has these tiny, it has these stars in it. Some of them are small, some of them are big, different size stars and an iridescent glitter. It's so pretty. So I'm applying the iridescent glitter onto that nude nail I put down, the plush cover, and then I'm just slightly fading it over top of the Cosmic Crush. I'm trying to get the stars out to put them in as well because I just love the stars so much. So they stick up a little, little bit. So I turn my brush and I'm trying to push the star down flat. It's not really gonna matter though because I'm gonna file and encapsulate. And then I am applying this over top of the white now as well, like I did with the dark blue and the Cosmic Crush. So I'm applying the Pluto on the white. I already added a star on this one because I had an extra star and I wanted to make sure to get it in. You can see the tiny stars here, so pretty. So I'm placing this on, fading this down, getting it close to the cuticle area, patting and pulling into place. And then I'm gonna continue to add this on the white and the nude of the thumb. And here's how they look so far before encapsulating. So I'm gonna encapsulate this set. I'm gonna be using my Glitter Balls Glass Slippers. It's always what I use for encapsulating. And the brush I've been using this whole time has been my Glitter Balls number 10 brush. So I'm applying a small bead in the center of the nail. I'm just fading that down. I didn't really like that bead, so I just quickly wiped that down. I'm gonna apply more of this, I don't know what I was doing here because I noticed now that I just switched fingers. Maybe my room was cold and maybe I needed it to dry a little bit differently. Not quite sure, um, but I decided to apply it just on the bottom half of the nail and then I'll go into the cuticle area in a second when that's dry. So I let the pinky dry a little bit and I'm coming back to do my cuticle bead. Like I said, I think the room was really cold this day so I was just trying to let it dry a little bit before going in with more product. So I applied a big bead at the cuticle area, pushing in and bending the finger downward, trying to get close to the cuticle area, don't overlap the skin, and then fade this down the nail while having an apex still. Again, I switch to the other finger. I'm applying a big bead, bending the finger downward, wiping off my brush, and then I'm going in to maneuver that bead around the cuticle area and blend it down the nail. You wanna make sure your nail is as even as you can, but it doesn't really matter because you're gonna finish file, so. I just like to try to make it even and just makes it easier for finish filing.
After I have encapsulated all the nails, I let them dry fully before filing them. So I'm going to be using the same bit that I was using to remove the product, but I'm just gonna be using a way lighter hand, just gently filing the nails with it to remove extra bulk. Because the nails aren't super thick, they don't need too much refining, and I like to do a lot of my refining with a hand file. So I'm just gently going over the nail with this bit, just to take some of the bulk off to make it easier for myself. I like to file the sidewalls and under the free edge with the bit as well. Just makes it a little easier. And I'm just being really gentle. You don't want to push too hard or you'll literally just remove everything you did like as if you were doing a removal. I'm using this bit very, very lightly. You also don't want to file into your stars if possible. I'm switching to a hand file to file my sidewalls and my free edge and I'm gonna use this to buff the whole nail, go over the whole nail, especially around the cuticle area and the sides. I want to keep my apex in place while smoothing out the rest of the nail. This will also help for when you apply your top coat. You don't want any of those deep scratches that files can leave. So you want to make sure to make the nail really smooth, but not too smooth or else your top coat won't stick to it. So that's why I'm using a file to do this. After I file all the nails with that hand file, I'm just taking a pink buffing block and quickly buffing around the cuticle area and the sidewalls underneath the nail, trying to get any bits that could stick up and be in the way. You don't want to make the nail too soft, like I said, or your top coat won't really stick to it. So just a light buff on all the nails. Before you top coat the nails, make sure you wipe off all the dust, which I did, and then I'm going in and cleansing the nail to get rid of all the dust. You can use uh, isopropyl alcohol for that. Oh, I'm adding some crystals in the center of this nail first. I used my Glitter Bells base glue to glue these crystals on, and then I'm just pushing the crystals into that base glue, and then you're gonna want to let that dry before you apply top coat. So I just did a small, simple little center design here accidentally covered up my favorite star. So we're gonna go in with our top coat. I'm gonna be using my Glitter Bells No Wipe top coat and just applying it over the nail. And you can see all that beautiful glitter show through. Top coating is one of the best parts because you can see everything just come to life. It looks so dull until you get to top coat it. So pretty.
when top coating nails with crystals, I like to wipe off my brush quite a bit and just get close into the crystal area, but don't overlap your crystals. If you overlap your crystals, you'll just destroy the shine on them and uh, they just won't look like real genuine Swarovski crystals and I just like to use the real crystals so don't put top coat over them just push the top coat close to them. After top coating the nails, I'm gonna give that a full cure. After they have come out of the lamp, you're gonna want to make sure they cool off a little bit before you apply cuticle oil so you don't ruin the shine. So I'm going in with the Glitter Bells Peach Cuticle Oil. It smells so good, like candy. <laughs> and I'm just applying this around. I'm gonna rub it all in and then I'll have her wash her hands and then we'll take some photos. And here is the finished set. I hope you guys liked it. I really enjoyed creating this set. It's, I've had it like on my computer for so long and I meant to get it to, I meant to edit it for you guys a while ago and I just kept putting it off. So I thought now would be the perfect time since they're kind of like a fall-ish themed design. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell next to it to be notified when I post and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.